Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I do not have a regular G.I. Joe toy review video for you this weekend. Because of certain delays behind the scenes, it's no big deal, you will get that video next weekend. But I wanted to have something for you guys to watch this Sunday, so instead of a regular G.I. Joe toy review video, I am going to assemble this vehicle, this box and the vehicle inside it, uh, was sent to me by a viewer, Justin Luby. Thank you, Justin, for that. Um, and it was sent to me for the purpose of assembling. So this is unassembled inside this box, uh, and we are going to put it together. This is the 1991 Brawler. It is a large tank uh, from 1991. Uh, pretty cool looking box, and um, now, I have seen this vehicle assembled and outside the box before, but I am gleeful about the opportunity to actually take this thing out of the box and put this vehicle together for the first time. I will be the first person to ever assemble this thing. Now, the box is not sealed. Um, it is already unsealed, and I don't think the contents inside the box are sealed either, uh, but the parts are still on the plastic frame, at least from what I could see. I didn't completely take it out, but I kind of peeked inside to uh, see, you know, see how it looked in there. So the parts are still on the plastic frame, and it doesn't look like this has ever been assembled before. So I'm going to take it out of the box, and I invite you to join me as we put together the 1991 G.I. Joe Brawler. Okay, I have my tools here, including my new nipplers that I can use to put this thing together. Um, now... Uh, as with most 90s vehicles, the uh, parts inside the outer box were in a cardboard tray. So we will start by pulling the tray out. Oh, the tray is kind of coming apart a little bit, but we have the cardboard insert tray. All right, there we go. And I'll set this box aside for now. Uh, the parts inside are bubble wrap. Um, and there are the instructions. That's always helpful. Um, I've had a couple of these that didn't have the instructions and blueprints, so I just, you know, looked it up on the internet, but it's nice to have them handy uh, so I can actually refer to them. And um, here we have a lot of parts. Um, as I said, uh, the parts are still on the plastic frame. At least most of them looks like a couple of them have broken off. Um, yes, there is orange on this tank, but there's not only orange. There's, there are other things. Um, so let's just start by getting the parts out, uh, just laying them all out. It's nice that uh, Justin thought to bu bubble wrap inside the box because otherwise these parts would have rattled around a bit in, um, in shipping and could have been damaged. So that just helps make sure these uh, arrive undamaged. So let, I'm just pulling everything out in no particular order. And let's spread them out and see what we've got. Okay, there's a tread. There's a little I don't know what. And there we go. Okay, and the rest is bubble wrap. We've got all the parts out, so I'm going to set the cardboard insert aside. And I'm going to lay these parts out in some kind of order um, so I can sort them. Uh, there's the treads. And these are all of the orange bits. Okay, orange bits, orange bits, orange bits. All right, that goes there. That goes with these. Those go together. Okay, all right, parts sorted. Make some room here. Parts sorted, now I'm gonna pause the video, video just for a second um, so I can do a quick read through. Oh. The all-important sticker sheet, very important. Uh, I want to pause just for a minute so I can do a quick read-through of the instructions. Okay, I've done a really quick scan of these uh, instructions, and I'm pretty sure I know how to assemble it, but I will keep these handy so I can refer to it uh, for each step. So for starters, it says to take the gray body, which is this right here. Uh, looks like we turn it this way. Um, and then we need, set that aside for a second, then we need the uh, orange reactive battle armor mechanism, which is this piece. That is, <laughs> that's a really bright orange. Uh, I know a lot of you uh, 
80s G.I. Joe fans are not going to love the orange, but uh, we work with what we've got. It was the 90s after all. And it says to insert this um, into here, this space, um, with the uh, top side up. And there is a little marking here on the inside that says top. So, therefore, it goes this way, I guess. Now, there, it has tabs that kind of line up with some slots, but um, let's see. I hope this isn't another one of those deals where I really have to force it in and risk breaking the thing. I, I, that's one thing that really scares me about these assembly videos is sometimes it just feels like I'm going to break the thing to try to get it on. That went relatively easy, though. So, step one. <clears throat> step two is to take the um, gray interior section, uh, this gray piece, which looks a little more silver. Um, it, it is a grayish silver. It's kind of a dull silver, but I, I call this silver. Um, and oh, we got to flip this over, and we've got to place it somewhere. Where are we placing it? Um, here. Let's see. Hold on. Got to line this up properly. Um, okay. Looks like it goes, ah, yes, like that. And it should kind of just snap in, right? There we go. There we go. Snaps in, and that provides the interior seats inside these hatches. All right. Well, for once, this has been fairly easy. Step three. Oh my god, this may be the fastest assembly we've ever done. And I probably just jinxed myself. Um, but here are these um, tank treads. And we need to put the wheels on. These, these go either way. It looks like there's no front and back. It looks like they're totally interchangeable. I could be wrong about that, but it sure looks that way. Anyway, we gotta put the wheels on and one of the wheels um, kind of popped off the plastic frame already, but the other three are still on here using the plastic nippers, using the plastic nipplers to nipple them off. There we go. Nipple and oh, come on, come on, nipple. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah. But we got still got some knobs on this. Let me see if these this will trim those off. Yeah, there we go. It's not going to roll very well with some of the uh, plastic sprue still on it. So let's um, let's trim it really quick. All right, that one's okay, and that one's okay. Okay, so make sure I do this right. Looks like the like one side of these wheels it's kind of um, geared looks like a, a gear and that goes on the inside so gear side in there we go and when I say inside I don't mean the inside of the track but what will be the inside uh, of the vehicle so that was amazingly easy I'm starting to get worried I'm starting to worry this is too easy. I'm starting to worry this is too easy. None of our assembly videos have been this easy. Um, so next step, I've got to turn this over. Um, and it says, align grooves in track tread with track posts on body and snap into place. Repeat for the other track. Okay, so it's gonna go like this. I'm gonna line up with these posts, these notches with these posts. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more so you can get a little better view. Yeah, let's try that. So line up. All right, I see the tabs that are supposed to grip on. I think, hold on, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That does not make sense to me. Why is, okay, no, I see, I see. 
All right, and this is kind of a flexible plastic, so, ah, there we go. So I think it'll give enough there that it shouldn't cause too much trouble getting on. I'm trying to do this facing you, but I, I can't see it from my side. But this, this end needs to go. I got the back end to snap on. I just need this front end. Ooh, to snap on, come on. We're so close, we are so close, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's so close. All right, see, I did speak too soon. It was too easy. But I've got this one tab that doesn't want to go, and I do not want to break this thing. It is almost there. Ugh. There, okay, all right. Had to have a little assistance with that. Um, but one track on, that front tab that goes right there just did not want to go. So let's try that again with the other side and hopefully it will go a little easier. So that lines up there. Maybe we'll try to do the front tab first this time. Front tab first, front tab first, ah, there, back tab, there we go. There we go. So if you're assembling one of these at home, um, put the front tab of the tread in first. That's just a lot easier. So we got the treads on, the tread has wheels, and now we have to assemble the missile arm connector. Um, and that is three pieces, including this big spoiler looking thing with uh, like a bar, um, and these arms these arms, arm one, arm two. So let's set this, aside. sorry, set that aside. Uh, let me make sure that I do this right. Snap orange missile arm connector into green left missile arm as shown. Repeat for right missile arm. So there's a left and a right, but is there an indicator for which side is which? There is, okay. Inside here, there's an R. So that will be on the right side. Uh, yeah, and right there, there is an L. So there, that's how it's supposed to go. Right, left. And I assume that it's right facing forward. So starboard and port. I hope that's what that means. Um, so this connects this way. Oh, I see it. I see it, it connects like this. Ah, and there, in the back too. So, it connects here and here, and it should just snap in. Snap, snap. Okay, well that was easy. Same thing on this side. Exactly the same thing. Hold on. And this flat plastic, for the most part, is flexible enough that it's going to give and should not cause should not give me too much trouble snapping on. I say that, but this one now is giving me trouble snapping on. All right. Come on now. Okay, lined up, press. Ah, nope. Thought it snapped in, but it did not. There we go, there we go. All right, so that is that thing. So what do we do with this thing? This now, I guess, becomes a pivot point, uh, this bar. And this goes, according to the instructions, here. Oh, yeah. Okay, check this out. It's got teeth right here, and there's a tab right there. So this should ratchet once it is connected. So let's make sure it's lined up. Make sure it's lined up, sure looks lined up. Um, let me see, let me make sure. Uh, connector bar ribs. Uh, let's see. Uh, be sure the round missile arm connector bar ribs are on the inside portion of the body as shown. Okay, so that goes like that. And then what, we just press it in until it, until it connects. Is that it? Or we don't press it in? Oh, we don't press it in, hold on. Yeah, it doesn't press in. It doesn't snap in. 
We just rest it in just like that for now. And now we take this. This is what holds it on. Which way is front? This way is front. It's got a little seat in there for a gunner. It's got two tabs here in the back. It's got one tab here in the front. And it should just pop on, right? Make sure it's lined up. Did that just pop on? Did that just pop on? Oh my gosh. And then this should, yeah, look at that. Ratchets, ratchets. Oh, nice. Back down. Beautiful, beautiful. Next, uh, the main cannon, orange cannon. And then there's an orange gun turret, which is this one. So I'm gonna nip that off. Nipple. Nipple. Uh, get to it. Get that nipple. There we go. All right. So we nippled that off, and this gun goes into this hole on the turret. Oops. This little mushroom clip. This plastic is a little more solid. Oh, whoops. I did it wrong. There's also a a tab, so it's a fixed forward-facing gun. It does not pivot. There's a, a tab there that goes into a slot there. Let's see. This plastic, though, as I said, is a little more firm. It does not give as much as the uh, kind of greenish plastic there, but it is in. There we go. And what do we do with this? We place it on this bar right here. I'm gonna to try to do this so you can see it. Should just snap on. Should, hold on, almost got it. I say almost, I have no idea if I almost got it or not. Okay, yeah, this, okay, did that get it? Did that get it? The orange plastic and the gray plastic there we go. And it ratchets too. Um, the orange plastic and the gray plastic does not have as much give. Uh, it's a, a little uh, more firm than the green plastic. The green plastic is a little bit easier to work with. All right, what's next? The, um, the guns, we got side guns. We got two side guns. Are they both the same? Yeah, they're both the same. So it doesn't matter which side it goes on. There's a hole right there, and it should it should just snap in. It should just snap in. I only elevate these so I can get to it a little more easily. I'm trying to, you know, a lot of times I do the assembly on my side, so you guys can't see it. But I'm trying to do it on your side so you can actually see the assemble assembly better but it makes it a little more difficult for me because I can't see it as well. Uh, all right, there, there's one. And that, yeah, that pivots. Other one, exactly the same thing. There we go, pivots, okay. What is next? Uh, grenades, oh, that's what these are. These things are grenades. Well, there's a whole bunch of them, so let's just Start nippling these off. Nipple and nipple. <laughs> there we go. Wonder if I'll get demonetized for saying nipple so much. Let's see. So these go ah, on this turret here. Uh, turret does not um, rotate. It's fixed in the front. Uh, elevates obviously. Um, I don't want to do a review on this as I'm assembling it, but I'm just noticing things. I like the elevation, but that that does not turn from side to side at all. That's interesting. Anyway, there are holes here um, and these grenades, oh, holes here and here, so these grenades just go in there. They should, yeah, just pop in. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Three. Uh, there. There, 
there. Six. Come on, pop in. Don't give me no trouble now. Oh, the, the hole in, that hole in the uh, tank body was, had a little bit of flashing on it, so it was a little tighter. This one's not too loose either, but it's, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, this, this plastic doesn't give as much. Um, it's a little bit harder to work with, but we're going to work with it. We're going to make it work. Man, I'm going to push that in quite with a, a lot of force just to get that in. Okay, let's get it. Ah, that one doesn't want to go. That one doesn't want to go, but you have no choice. You must go. You must go. All right. As I've said before, I would not open and assemble a vehicle that was rare or, you know, from the 80s. But there are lots of these 90s vehicles that um, are still in circulation. Um, there we go. And um, doesn't really significantly reduce the number of sealed ones and unassembled ones that are in the market. So, I don't feel so bad about it. Okay, so now we got 12 grenades pegged in. That was not super easy, but it's done. Now, we have the orange missiles. And I want to make sure I put these in correctly. Uh, because I believe these missiles will really fire. So, slide orange missile into missile arm, then turn missile tab to lock into launcher as shown. To fire, flick the firing tab downward. Okay, I got it. So, uh, let's see. It goes like this, and then turn it up. Right, so there's the missile. Other side, it's got this kind of uh, tab here. That goes in toward the outside. And then you slide it in until it gets to this opening right here. And then turn it up, and that locks it in place. And then to fire it, you just push it down, I guess. Uh, oh, holy crap, that, oh, that went far. I had to chase down that missile. I had no idea these missiles were that powerful. Um, that, <laughs> that went really far, really fast. Okay, uh, last piece is this, which I believe tabs into this uh, reactive armor piece. Um, and I believe this will pop out too. Uh, uh, push down my button on, okay. Push down on button on mechanism to lock in place. That doesn't, what, it, okay, the instructions seem to be missing a step. Because it, oh, oh, okay, here we go. Um, it says press down on button on mechanism to lock into place, but it doesn't say what button on what mechanism. But there we go. There we go. And I think if you hit this, it'll, yeah, it's like a pop-out battle damage kind of thing. All right. Well, that's okay. That's not bad. So you just push it back in there. There we go. To lock it in place. And this is a fully assembled brawler, but... We're not quite done because we have the all important stickers. Okay, this is my favorite part. This is our moment of zen. Um, and there are, there's the, there are the instructions for the sticker placement. And let's just get started. Let's get started. Now this is, it's harder for me to do this. Let me position this a little better. It's hard for me to do this on this side so you can see. I kind of have to do it on my side, but I will turn it so uh, you can see where the stickers are placed um, after each one. So we're going to start in front because that's where the instructions start. These are paper stickers, uh, so they have some really nice bright colors. Um, but these paper stickers are uh, not quite as easy to work with as the old style vinyl stickers. Um, this goes here. Um, hold on. 
not as forgiving as the vinyl stickers. There we go. Try to get that straight. Try to get it straight. Well, that's not super straight. But yeah, once you have these stickers on, they are really hard to get off and and move. So once they're placed, they pretty much have to stay. It may not be impossible to peel them off, but really, really hard to do without tearing the sticker. Okay, so we've got two on. One uh, with some random numbers and um, another one with some Cobra kill marks. And you can see the one with the Cobra kill marks is, is not super straight, but that's the best we can do. Um, we also need to put a danger sticker right there. Where's the danger sticker? Uh, number eight. Number eight. Where's number eight? Um, where are you, number eight? There's number eight. There we go. Um, which end up? That end up. Okay. So that, let's try to center it. There we go. Okay. So now there's a sticker right there. Danger sticker. Oh, I don't know. This is a time I, um, I feel like I should share more personal anecdotes, but I don't know if I have any more stories that you guys haven't already heard. Um, well, let's see. What what might you guys not know about me? Um, personal history stuff. When I was 18 years old, I went to art school in Dallas at the Art Institute of Dallas. My original plan was to be an artist, hopefully a comic book artist. But... Um, I was pretty much totally unprepared, so I didn't do well, and after a year I returned home having not gotten a degree. Uh, kind of failed on that one, but um, after I returned home, ah, this goes inside, okay, it, this goes, it's a little con control sticker, control panel that goes inside this turret, so let's do that. Returned home, got a job at a used bookstore, local used bookstore, called Gardner's Used Books and Comics. Um, and if you are from the Tulsa area, you definitely know what bookstore I'm talking about. It's, uh, it's very large. Um, and I worked there for a few years, moved on, um, worked for um, a supermarket for a while, a supermarket chain, that, a local chain that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and then uh, I got a job at, um, well, at the time it was called WorldCom. It was later, okay, WorldCom eventually bought MCI. I don't know if anybody's older, old enough to remember MCI, the telephone company, um, but WorldCom bought them, um, and then there was a huge scandal, <laughs> and people went to jail uh, for um, this uh, big accounting scandal. There's something to Google. Um, I was working at MCI WorldCom during one of the biggest accounting uh, fraud scandals in history. But I was not in the accounting department, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> um, so that kind of went crazy. And then um, that company was bought by Verizon and became Verizon Business. So I worked for three different corporations without ever changing jobs. Uh, and I did that for over 13 years. And during that time, I got a wild idea that I wanted to own my own used bookstore. I loved working at Gardner so much, I thought, you know, 
I know how the used book business goes. I know how to run a used bookstore. So I put some money together, rented out a space, and I opened a used bookstore. Didn't have comic books like uh, Gardeners, but uh, just books. Just books. Where does that go? It goes there. There we go. G.I. Joe logo. Now, um, this plan might have turned out all right. Um, I did own my own business for a while. Um, and it, it might have uh, gone well. Uh, except uh, there was one um, minor issue, one little hiccup in the plan. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the huge economic crash that we had, um, I don't know, about how long ago, like um, 11 years ago, like 2007, late 2007-ish, when um, the U.S. economy uh, went in the crapper. Well, that, that wasn't good for business. It certainly wasn't good for my business. So, yeah, we... Um, uh, it basically it basically tanked us. Um, so we struggled until we got to uh, the end of our lease uh, for our retail space, and then we shut the business down. But for a time, I owned and operated a used bookstore in. It's actually out here where I live now in Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow is a small city near Tulsa. It's really, it's a suburb of Tulsa, although people from Broken Arrow don't like to think of themselves as being in a suburb of Tulsa, but let's be truthful, it's, it's a suburb. It's just what it is. Let's, let's call things what they are. You're a suburb, whatever. Anyway, it was out here, and it did all right for a while, but yeah. Um, with the economic downturn, nothing, <laughs> no businesses were doing very well. So that was kind of the end of that. Um, and I stayed in telecom for, for a while. Um, but the uh, company I worked for, let's turn this around. I want to do this side first. The company I worked for um, was outsourcing some of our jobs overseas. Um, I could have stayed with the company, probably would have survived the cuts. I had a lot of experience there, you know, having been there for 13 years. But I had also been going to school. This whole time I've been uh, taking classes, college courses, often at night. And I was getting close to finishing my degree, and they were offering you know, voluntary severance packages. And so I talked it over with Susan and um, we decided it's time to, to finish the degree. I've been, I've been working on it for years, doing classes whenever I could, but it was time to finish my bachelor's degree. So I took the severance package and um, oh, I'm not done here. Took the severance package and um, went to Northeastern State University and um, got the credits that I needed and finished my bachelor's degree. And then I moved on to what I had been planning to do and been trying to do for almost a decade, like eight years. It took me like eight years to get a four-year degree. Because I was working full-time. I had a family working full-time. Part of that time I had a business to run, so it's not easy to get the, the courses, the classes that you need, you know, with all that going on. So, yeah, it took me about eight years to get a four-year degree. But I finished, and uh, where does that go? Uh, this goes, okay, this is something I don't like about the sticker instructions on uh, 90s vehicles is that it instructs you to place stickers over molded details on the vehicle. So I'm going to have to place a sticker right over this molded detail. 
and I just I don't I don't like that but there's nowhere else to put it that's the only place to put it so I'm gonna follow the instructions but I don't like covering up molded detail with stickers there's that one and now this side um, so I finished my degree, I took the LSAT, did really well at it, um, applied for um, law school at the University of Tulsa, and I'm glad I got in there. <laughs> it's a good thing I got um, accepted there because I didn't apply anywhere else. I, I wanted to stay here in town, or in Tulsa, because that's where my family was. I did not want to move away to go to law school. So I didn't apply anywhere else. If I hadn't got accepted at, at TU, I just would have been out of luck. Uh, but I did get accepted. Um, three years of law school, um, harder than I expected, but I had a little bit of an advantage. I had a little bit of an advantage because I was an older student. And you know, I'd had my partying years yeah, I partied. I, I had lots of friends, went to, went to lots of parties, clubs, concerts, all of that. Had lots of fun. But, you know, after a few years of doing that a lot, you know, I'd kind of done it all. You know, I, I'd been to all the parties. I'd been to all the concerts. I'd been to all the clubs. And, you know, I just wasn't any... There was no adventure in that anymore. So I was kind of past my partying days. Whereas a lot of my younger fellow students, my cla fellow my uh, classmates, um, they tried to manage law school while also partying, um, which you can do. It's possible. I've seen it done. But um, yeah, so for me though, instead of partying all night, I would read. I would study. And in law school, I ended up doing pretty good. Complete law school, take and pass the bar examination, have a couple jobs outside of law school before I get the one I'm in, and here we are. So there is your assembled, your assembled brawler with all the stickers. There's a Marine Corps emblem on it. So I guess this is supposed to be a marine vehicle for G.I. Joe. It does have a G.I. Joe logo right there, um, right there. But uh, there it is. Uh, thank you, Justin, for giving us the opportunity to put this thing together. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Justin Luby, for sending this vehicle and giving me the opportunity to put it together. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was actually more fun than some of the vehicles I've assembled recently. It wasn't nearly as difficult as some of the other videos we've assembled on this channel. Uh, and now we have a fresh out of the box, absolutely mint uh, brawler to look at. And it's, it's quite impressive. Yes, even with the orange, it's it's quite impressive. So thank you for that. Thank you all for watching. Um, sorry about not having a full review for you today. We'll get into that next Sunday, uh, and I'm already working on the video after that one. So we're not giving up. We're still plowing forward. Uh, we never give up. We never surrender. Uh, but I hope this is sufficient uh, in the meantime. Uh, and just um, wanted to express my appreciation for you being here. Uh, watching the videos and just going on this collecting journey with me. So thank you for that and that's all. Uh, we will see you next week with a full vintage G.I. Joe toy review and until then remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.